Hi everyone, my name is Jeffrey Ladd. I'm here in Cologne, Germany, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about my new book from Mac, which is called A Field Measure Survey of American Architecture. The photographs in the book, which many of you already know, they're not my pictures. They're drawn from two quite vast collections held by the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. One is called the Historic American Building Survey, and there's a second called the Historic American Engineering Record. And between these two collections, they hold something over half a million documents, being black and white photographic negatives, color transparencies, there's architectural plans as well, in some cases, written histories of some 43,000 buildings that were around the United States. I discovered this archive actually through the work of another photographer named Francis Benjamin Johnston. Some of you might know her pictures from this small little catalog called the Hampton Album. It was published in 1966 by the Museum of Modern Art. I actually was researching a couple architecture photographs of hers, which I had never seen before. Pictures like these, and they're quite stunning images. She made these pictures back in the 1930s. She was commissioned by the Carnegie Institute to do a survey of architecture throughout uh, the American rural South. And yeah, I discovered just a couple of these randomly online and I started gathering them for research. I thought like many kinds of pictures that there would be something for me to learn from these images. It's interesting because Frances Benjamin Johnson, she was actually born in the midst of the American Civil War. So by the time she was making these photographs, she was pushing 70 years old and she wound up making over 7,000 images in this survey. This is one of my favorites. It's absolutely beautiful. So what I found out though is as wonderful as these pictures were, these were actually just a subset of this much larger historical archive known as the Historic American Building Survey. And when I started looking through this archive, one of the first pictures I found was this. I actually started searching through the archive based on uh, the state that I was born in, which is Pennsylvania. And I saw this picture, and at first I thought this was a contemporary of Francis Benjamin Johnston or maybe from Walker Evans, you know, a Pete CKR figure or something like this. Uh, everything about the picture more or less kind of screamed in 1930s, so I thought it was a very, very old photograph. But then you start seeing these small details, the street signs and the private property sign. I discovered the picture wasn't from the 1930s at all. The picture was from 1991, that it was well within my lifetime. And actually, it was within the time that I'd been practicing photography, which I started in 1986. And... This became very interesting. Of course, photographs do this. They deceive you at times. So I started exploring this archive, each night binging on photographs. And after a little over a year and a half, I realized that I had some 3,000 photographs on a hard drive. And when I would look at what I chose, you know, based on my own subjective criteria, a kind of portrait of the country seemed to appear. Of course, this is set against the just absolutely fraught politics of the past five years. I felt as though were I to try and say something about my country at this particular moment when it seems to have turned a corner, that now was the time to do it and I probably couldn't do any better than to utilize these photographs to say it. And that's really the moment when it came from just being research material to the idea of a book. 
you know, within these pictures, there's just absolute vast amounts of beauty and wonderful improvisation. But there's also a sense of economic insecurity. It seems to describe a society that maybe is without certain safety nets. There's a lot of implied violence in the photographs. So with so much material, of course, when it came to making the book, I had to set certain parameters. And one parameter that I thought was appropriate was that all the photographs that would wind up in the field measure survey would only be pictures made within the time that I lived within the United States, which I was born in 1968 and I left the country in 2011. So there are 224 photographs in the book made by 107 different photographers. And although they represent all kinds of different photographers, there's architectural photographers, there's just hobbyist photographers, and in some cases there's even students of photography that took some of these pictures. It was important that the general sense of the book felt as if you might actually be able to mistake it for the voice of a single person. I wound up structuring the book as a road trip. It starts in Pennsylvania, which is my home state, as I mentioned before, and it kind of weaves north and south while heading west. So you wind up in the outskirts of Alaska, the second to last state added to the United States. Just by pure coincidence, the man who actually established these archives, a man named Charles Peterson, submitted his proposal for their creation to the Department of the Interior on November 13th, 1933. And as it happens, I was born November 13th, but in 1968. So I wanted to give a nod to certainly a few books that inspired the creation of the survey. And the first of which is uh, maybe one of my favorite photography books. It's Michael Schmeling's book, The Plan, that was published in 2009 from JNL Books. It's quite odd because it's, I find it a quite difficult book to look at. If you're not familiar, it, Michael photographed uh, an agency in New York that's called Disaster Masters. They specialize in cleaning out the apartments and homes of people suffering from hoarding disorder. He photographed for around two years, tagging along with the crew. The thing about the book that I love. First off, you see it's about 600 pages, well over 500 photographs. Uh, it's one pass of black, newsprint style. Your fingers get dirty. You smudge the covers. It seems as though the content of the book kind of takes over the form or actually transforms the book, which is I don't know of many photography books that actually do that. It's a book that pushes back on this idea that you should kind of read the book in one sitting. You know, most photography books have something between, you know, they have between 20 and 100 pictures. Uh, but it's, they seem to imply at that size that you should sit down and read the whole thing in one sitting. And this is a book, you know, of 600 pages and 500 photographs. I like books that push back on that idea that you can read them in one sitting. I mean, like, maybe there's a person out there that took Robert Frank's Americans and looked at the first 10 pictures and then put it down and the next day they looked at the second 10 pictures and put it down and a week later they got through the book, but I kind of highly doubt it. 
But this is a particular book where it's quite grueling to go through. It's a bit tedious, uh, certainly repetitive. I mean, it's about hoarding, so it's perfect for the content. But it's interesting because you find the way that you read the book, if you are like me, I feel kind of obligated to pay attention to every photograph, but yet that's very difficult to do with a book of this size. I'm interested in objects that, that kind of almost become tedious for the reader. Tedium, I think, is not a characteristic that people usually put into a photography book. Um, you know, downstairs in my apartment, I have entire bookcase full of photo books that are just absolutely wonderful to look at. Um, and very few of them create the kind of space that this particular book does. It's really, it's really a great, great work. So another book that I really, really love, uh, that I drew inspiration from, in a simple way, it's quite literally the same size as my book, is uh, Jakob Kirsch's uh, Platz ist, wo es hinkommt which roughly translates to the place where it goes. Jakob Kirsch uh, is not a photographer, he's a graphic designer. Um, he graduated from the Institute for Buchkunst in Leipzig, which is a really amazing school. And this particular book is actually full of images that he's taken from old kind of do-it-yourself home improvement magazines. Uh, from the former GDR from East Germany. The picture placement uh, follows a lot of the original magazines. And what I really love about this book is it's just this mass of information which he's removed all the text, of course, so you wind up with these images that you're just trying to figure out what it is you're looking at. And a lot of times I look at these and, you know, they look less like they're from kind of home improvement magazines and more things that could possibly have been art installations or little performance pieces, the leftovers of performances from like a Roman Signer figure or little constructions from Fischley and Weiss. Again, there's, there's like Schmeling's book, there's 432 pages here and probably about 1,200 images. Then in the back of the book, you have actually an index, which tells you which magazines it came from and uh, what kind of articles were in the magazines. So the next book is probably one of the more odd and perhaps confusing of what I'm going to show you. It's called just simply The Dutch Housewife. And it's a book that was published in 1966 by the Philips Company, the Electronics and Light Bulb Company. And the purpose of the book was to answer certain questions about the life of the Dutch housewife. And right here on the first page, they have a little summary, and I'll read it. How the Dutch housewife spends her time. Further details concerning that time spent the use of domestic appliances, the home as a place where the duties are carried out, and the housewife's attitude with respect to her work and her life. And they actually surveyed between September and October of 1964, 2,100 different Dutch housewives with this questionnaire. And the first 85 pages 
of the book are basically the answers to all those survey questions. But the book doesn't stop there. There's a photographic component, which are the apartments and houses of a select group of the housewives. And I should explain the methodology because the layout of the book actually reflects a very strict kind of methodology. The top pictures are photographs of the kitchen. The middle pair are photographs of the dining room. And the bottom pair are photographs of the living room or sitting room. And that's what the entire rest of the book is. Photographs of these domestic spaces. Occasionally there are these little notes that explain kind of the layout of the rooms. Now the thing that I thought was confusing about this book is, is of course, you know, what are the pictures actually describing? Generally, before a photographer comes to a house, the people that own the house clean it up. All the apartments more or less look the same. And then there are very interesting notes as well that show up. You know, we couldn't take a picture of the living room because the housewife was drying the laundry. Or we couldn't take a picture of the dining room because the family was eating. It's just confusing to me what Phillips thought that these pictures would reveal regarding their inquiry because, well, for me, photography doesn't really work to answer specific questions like what they were asking. But it's an absolutely fantastic book. It's the kind of book that I've referred to as almost an accidental conceptual masterpiece. Really great book. So, thanks for tuning in. Next time you're in your local bookseller, please check out a copy of the Field Measure Survey of American Architecture or any of the number of amazing Mac books that they have coming out this season. And I hope everyone well, and thanks again for tuning in. Ciao. Bye.